Crafts here today to talk about how I make a cotton dishcloth. I use these in my kitchen. I really love them. I've made a ton of them and so by trial and error I've come up with a way that I prefer and I thought I'd share it with you. It, I use cotton yarn. I use the Lily Sugar and Cream like I uh, usually do. I love the colors on it. And I use the Moss Stitch. It's a, a pattern originally posted a tutorial posted by Mikey from Crochet Crowd. Uh, he, uh, and I'll post that link, he um, definitely is a great person to watch to figure out how to do the moss stitch even though it's very easy. I like the moss stitch because it's got that great texture so when I'm um, wiping the kitchen counter with a stitch cloth and I have something sticky or sugary because of the texture and the, and the nubs here it really does um, pick up stuff very well. I use the moss stitch uh, for, the, for the whole thing. Uh, my method is to do moss stitch for the most just in rows and then at the end I go around three times with the moss stitch and make a, a subtle border. Um, I just like the look of that. That also makes it about eight inches square the way I do it. A little bit more, a little bit less depending on, on how tight my stitch is that day. Definitely a flexible pattern though. You're able to make it smaller or, or bigger depending on your preferences. All right, let's talk about materials. I already showed you the yarn, Lily Sugar and Cream, comes in lots of colors. I use an H hook 5.0 and I also use a stitch marker. You'll see later on, there's a point where I like to mark where I am in the border and I either use a piece of yarn that's a contrasting color and tuck it in or I use a, um, one of these stitch markers. I'm using these a lot lately and I am finding that I like them. Just to, before I get started, I wanted to show you other things that I've done here. I've been making quite a few of these. I'll back up here. Making quite a few of these. I, I like to make them in different colors. I uh, think they're great little gifts along with a, a little candle or a thing of soap purchased by themselves. I also made these labels and I will post that PDF. Um, you're welcome to use them if you want. But it says 100% cotton, machine washable. And I find that I like to keep them in a, in a little basket. And as I gift them, I, I let people pick a color because I don't often know the colors they prefer for their kitchen area. All right, let's get made a slip knot to begin. And your foundation chain is gonna be 29 chains long. It really can be any odd number. I have found that 29 works well for me and uh, in all of these dishcloths that I've made. Feel free though to make it longer or shorter depending on what you're looking for and just um, make sure that you stick with an odd number. So 29 chains and I do it sort of loose, not super loose to begin with. But I find just having a loose touch on that first chain makes, makes it fit better with the rest of the dishcloth as you go. So 29 chains is where we're headed and I'll meet you back there. Welcome back. You should have 29 chains at this point or any odd number of chains will work. And it's time to learn the moss stitch. So the moss stitch starts by putting hook into the second chain from the hook. So first chain from the hook is right here and the second chain from the hook is right here. I like to put it put the hook in the chain right above that bottom loop so that there's two pieces of yarn on top. Pull that loop through and then do a single crochet then a chain one. And that is the basics of the moss stitch. It doesn't get much harder than that. So a pretty easy stitch. Now you skip a chain and do the same thing in the following chain. So we're gonna skip the next chain, which is this one here, and go into this one. So hook inserted pull up the loop for that single crochet, chain one. 
and we do that all the way across. So skip a stitch, insert hook, single crochet, chain one. Skip a stitch, insert hook, single crochet, chain one. So continue in this way uh, until you get to the end and I will join you there to show you how to finish that first row. All right, we are almost back to where we began. Uh, it's not much to look at, I know, what you've done so far on that second row. It will um, start looking more even and stretched out. Um, so don't worry if it looks a little crumply and like a, like a kinked worm. All right, so we're coming to the end. We are still doing the skipping of a stitch. So we're skipping that one, putting our hook in here, single crochet, chain one. Now we're coming to the end now, and here's where it goes a little different. We are gonna skip again. Skip, go into this one, same as before. Do a single crochet but without the chain one. So two stitches from the end on every row, you will, because the stitches are right next to each other and you don't need that extra chain one to fill the gap, those last two stitches of each row will be single crochet only. So single crochet, no chain one, like you've been doing all the way along, and then you're gonna put your um, hook in the very last stitch, which is kind of cramped up here. pull a loop, single crochet, and that's it. So two single crochets only at the end, and that completes your second row, even though it needs a little stretching. Now, for the next row, we're gonna chain one in order to get started. For the next row, chain one, and we are gonna flip it. Okay, the next row, looks like this. You are putting your hook in immediately into the hole under that chain one that you just did. So right under your chain one is that hole. Hook goes in there, pull up a loop, single crochet, chain one, just like before. And just like before, we're gonna skip a stitch. We're gonna skip that stitch, and we're gonna go into this stitch. And you'll see that the one we're gonna put our hook into is always a big open space because of what we did before with that chain one gap. So put your hook in, single crochet, chain one. Again, we're skipping that stitch. We're going into this lovely open place, single crochet, chain one. So this gives you a sense of why the moss stitch this is so great. It's pretty fast because you're always skipping a stitch. It's easy oops, because all, all it is really is skipping a stitch, single crochet, chain one. And let me tell you, you can really get into a rhythm doing the moss stitch. It's great for watching a movie or watching television it's almost you don't even have to look after a while because when it's time to put your hook in you almost can feel it with your with your fingers where that big gap is where your hook goes in the moss stitch I love it okay I'm gonna keep going here until we get to the end because I want to show you what happens the end of this row of row three it's really what happens at the end of every row what I already showed you but I want to make sure that you see it again because it's 
kind of the only tricky part about this. Okay, so I'm coming up to my last stitches here. My second to the last stitch is going to be in our lovely gap that we've been getting used to. So I'm going to put my skip here, put my hook in here, just like usual. I'm in a single crochet only, so I'm not going to do that chain one that I've been doing all the way across. And then I'm going to go into the very last stitch, no skipping, like before. So these last two stitches are right next to each other without skipping. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, and it's right here. It's right, you'll always have this little diagonal loop over here, and it's always just to the right of that diagonal um, piece of yarn right here. So just to the right, go in here, and I want to make sure that I catch two pieces of yarn though. So I do turn it around and just watch my hook peek through that hole so that I can make sure that I have two pieces of yarn on top there. So I'm going to pull out and do it again. So this is the second to the last stitch. I just single crocheted, no chain one on this one. Into the immediately next stitch, I put my hook right in here. I'm going to make sure that I pick up two pieces of yarn and I'm going to pull a loop, single crochet. So that's really the official end of row three. Looks pretty darn good. And this is what you're going to be doing. Oh, so I wanted to explain why that is. Um, Mike, Mikey from Crochet Crowd explains it well too. But basically we are doing this at the end of every row so that each row has the same pattern. If you didn't do this, um, won't go into the details, but if you didn't do this you would really have a row A and a row B that you would need to alternate back and forth that would be different. And this, I think, is much easier to keep in my brain than having to remember am I on row A or row B as I go throughout the whole dishcloth. So I think it's a pretty cool little thing. Okay, so moving on to the next row, it's going to be a chain one. Turn your work. And remember that first stitch of the next row goes into this hole right here, into this hole, which is at the bottom of that chain one. So hook in single crochet, chain one. We're skipping again back to our, our rhythm, putting our hook in that big hole, single crochet, chain one. I was looking at the camera, I didn't quite get it through there, okay. So you get the idea. This is this is it. This is what you will do for most of the dishcloth. So my plan from here is to keep going and do as many rows as it takes to have a square dishcloth. How many is that? It just depends. Depends on how tight my stitches are. Uh, if I've accidentally grabbed a 5.5 hook instead of this 5.0 hook. So I actually um, don't count rows. I just keep going until it is square. I'm at the end, so that is the second to the last with just the single crochet. No extra chain one. Going immediately into the next stitch right here. Tipping it forward just to make sure that my hook gets right through. The place that I want it to be with those two yarns on top and then a final single crochet. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to show you, um, come back and show you when I have more rows, how I figure out if it's square or not, how I know it's time to do the borders. So meet you back here. Have fun. Welcome back. I have gotten this far. It is starting to look like it might be getting close to a square. Um, it, I don't know how many rows I'm at, but here's what I do to determine whether it's a square or not and ready to start on the borders. I um, do what I did back in grade school when I was making cootie catchers. I fold it in a diagonal. So just casually fold it into a diagonal and check to see if the points match. Uh, they don't yet, so that means that I have more to go. I have more to go on this end to um, continue to make it more square. I'll see you soon.
Hi again, doing a quick check to see if we're at a square yet. I've done a little bit more, so I'm doing my folding. Trying to get that point right on the diagonal. And how are we doing? Oh, it just looks like we're almost there. So this is the edge I'm working on, and it is, I'm guessing, one more row to make those points come together. Can you see that? So probably one more row. Meet you back. Welcome back. I am working on what I hope will be the last row to achieve that square shape I'm looking for on my dishcloth. Okay. I am going to, we'll come to the end. Second to the last stitch is single crochet only. And then immediately into the final stitch, which I've been doing all along, end my row with a single crochet. All right, let's check it out. Do we have a square? All right, I'm gonna fold it diagonally. Make sure that corner is matched as well as possible. This is all pretty non-scientific, but you can see that my point is pretty much there. If I go another row, it's going to be too long on the underside. So there, my friends, is a square. So I'm going to unfold it, and it is. we're ready now to start the border. All right, starting the border. We are not going to cut anything. We're not going to break the, th the yarn, we're going to keep on. So the first thing I uh, need to tell you is that uh, we're going to go around, all the way around three times. I'm going to continue to use the moth stitch, which means I will continue to be skipping stitches or at least allowing for a gap. So there's that lovely moth stitch hole every once in a while that we like that creates that texture. Um, every corner I'm going to do two chains and that will help us go around the corner. So each corner takes two chains. I'm just going to continue with the moss stitch. Before we start though, I am going to mark this corner. So this is the corner where we're starting our border and I have the hardest time remembering where the start of my border is on a dishcloth that I'm working on. I just um, lose track and they all look the same to me after a while. So I have found it almost critical to mark the starting corner. And I do it like this with this stitch marker. I just find one of these gaps and slip the bottom part into it. It doesn't need to be you know, something that'll stay forever. It just needs to make it through a couple rounds. And that, actually that's pretty sturdy. And I don't necessarily put it right at the corner because I know that I'm going to be going around and around and around and want to have use of this corner for my stitches. So we are ready to start on the border. To begin, we're going to go around that first corner with the two chains that I mentioned already. That just leaves you some room for maneuverability around that corner. So two chains, and then we are going to go back into that um, hole that we did our last stitch in. Pull up a loop, single crochet, chain one. So we are now around the corner. Now to continue with the moss stitch, we are going to continue with that idea of skipping a stitch. And here's how I look at it. I look at, um, I look at that being a stitch, that being a stitch, that being a stitch, that being a stitch. This is right going up the side of the dishcloth. Remember, this was our last row and we rounded the corner. So it's it's a little bit of a, um, oh, you need a creative attitude going down the side here. You want, um, uh, there's no really uh, a set rule. Uh, we just want it to look like a, an even flat border at the end, not too many stitches in the side and not too few either. So here's how I manage that. I, um, after going into that, making that first moss stitch in that corner hole, 
I am going to aim to skip that one and go into this next one. So what that means is all the way up the side of this dishcloth, I am gonna be sticking my hook into the holes that have this, this little vertical piece here. So I'm gonna go into that hole and then I'm gonna do the mustache and then I'm gonna go into this hole right here underneath that vertical piece and then this hole. So that allows me enough skipping where the moss stitch will lie flat. So here we go. I did that chain one on that moss stitch, so now I'm gonna skip into this hole. Oops, I did two chains. So that's a single crochet and a chain one. Same as we have been doing, the moss stitch continues. So hope this is clear. We're doing the skip, so skipping that hole into this hole. The, the hook finds it pretty easily. And then doing the single crochet and chain one. Skip, single crochet, chain one. And we're coming up on the next Here. So we're coming up on the next corner, and this is always a little bit of uh, just using your best judgment. Um, it looks like actually there isn't going to be a final skip because this is going to be our final hole for the side, and we just went into that one. So I'm going to undo my chain one. Remember when the stitch stitches we make are right next to each other, we don't need that chain one. So I'm. I just did that single crochet and then I'm going to immediately go into this last hole and do another single crochet. And that brings us to the end of the side coming down that first uh, border round. Okay, so for this corner, I actually leave this tail out and about. I don't work it in. I find that later, um, because it's the moss stitch and there's lots of gaps, you can see it too much. So I leave this tail loose and I will sew it in later, but in a way with the moss stitch that it's not so visible. So another corner, same thing. We're gonna start with a chain two. And then we are going to round the corner. Oops, keeping that tail out of the way. And then again, we're gonna start the new round by going into that same hole, pulling up that loop. It's sometimes a little tricky in the corner, just wiggle it until it feels like it's in the right place. Pull through for that single crochet, and then um, chain one. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. We are now on the bottom edge of the dishcloth. Remember we started here going around, so we're at that bottom edge. This is that edge that we first started with, with our chain of 29. So it, it, it does look a little different, um, but same idea. We're skipping a space and um, doing the moss stitch all the way across. So what I'm gonna suggest is that we, since this first stitch is just to the right of these double bars, I'm gonna suggest that we do that. We skip to that double bar and to the, that double bar. So again, there's this is not an exact, exact science. Uh, feel free to um, try different things and see what works for you. So I am going to skip here. I have a funny little yarn here, which shouldn't be here. I don't know what happened, but so pretty much it's to the right of these double bars. I'm gonna put my hook in, moss stitch. Looking for the next double bars, which is way over here. Put my hook in. And you get the idea. Really the goal is an even, good looking border stitch. that by definition covers up any weirdness from your original chain. For whatever reason, maybe numbers 
in your original chain might be different than mine because you wanted a bigger or smaller one but for some reason you feel like you want to adjust where this hook goes in you know it might be between the double bars or it might be over there as long as you do the same thing put your hook in the same place all the way across um, that consistency is what you're looking for and what's going to give you a nice good looking border in the end okay so gosh this i think I'm, we're going to call that the the corner on this one and going to do two, chain two for the corner and we're rounding ready to go up the next side and i am going to same as always find a place for that i might actually just put it right here to start the new one that feels right and then that chain one and then let's check it out um, that went in right here so it looks like maybe we should keep going here and then here that looks about right I think so I'm gonna skip that hole and aim for this hole over here which is kind of hard to see but it's that hole and once your hook digs for it it um, finds it pretty easily single crochet chain one I'm leaping, jumping, skipping, single crochet, chain one. So moss stitch all the way up the side. I love it that the moss stitch has a skip all the time because it really does make it go fast. Okay, we're coming up on our third corner. Let's see, I want it to go right there. And I'm going to call that, just like we did on the other side, I'm not going to do the chain one on this one because it feels like the last stitch is immediately the next one. Okay, so we are rounding the corner, the third corner, with two chains, and we are putting our hook back in, that looks good to me, kind of wiggle around so that that feels straight and tidy, and then we are in the home stretch. So again, let's see. I'm going to do, it feels like maybe the same thing, so just to the right of those double bars all the way across, that feels like a good skip for that moss stitch. Now we are, our goal here is to go around, I don't know why I'm having a hard time with that, um, to go around three times to get, give that nice finished look. This is, uh, going around three times is just something I landed on though. You definitely um, might just want to go around this one time. Maybe two times is enough. Once you make it all the way around the first time though, the other two times are go even faster. Not that this hasn't been pretty fast too. Um, let's see, I, I do call that a skip. So what I'm going to do, so this is the, the first time we've um, encountered a corner that we've already been working on around the border. So I am going to just um, slide into that little gap that those chain that chain two makes when you go around the corner and we'll do that for the rest of the time too so i am gonna s jump um skip that hole and move over here with the moss in the spirit of the moss stitch and finish the corner that way 
Now I'm gonna go over start my second round around the border. So I'm gonna do chain two again, which I will do oops, on every corner. That's chain two. And then this is where this big gap starts happening. And so what I have done before on my second and third rounds is when I do the corner and I'm ready to start a new side, I will, instead of going back into that hole, which continues to make that hole bigger and kind of an odd gap, I will um, catch the yarn underneath that hole for my first stab on the new side. So I'm gonna do that again. So I just chain two for the corner. And when I insert my hook, instead of inserting it into that that big hole, which actually will make it wider in my experience and kind of oddly obvious. I aim for grabbing that bottom yarn right under that hole just to avoid that big gap. And then chain one. And then I'm off and running again. And now we're really, we're working into a previous moss stitch. So just like most of the work, going into those big gaps is the way to go for the skipping that you need to do for the moss stitch. So this goes really fast. And this is what you have ahead of you for the second, whoops, I caught too much there, uh, the second and third time around the border is that you're working into a previous moss stitch with that hole looking pretty obvious and easy to find. I'm going to go around this next corner and then assume you have the hang of it and meet up with you toward the end. Oops, got this pesky tail here. Get that out of the way. So again, this is a case where I am going to jump all the way to here in our previous moss stitch. These are the two that are go together. So I'm going to jump them and just go into this corner gap. And again, when I turn the corner and I go on to the next side, instead of going right back into that corner gap, actually that works fine. I'm going to go into that. It's this is an example of how sometimes you just got to go with the flow and do what seems best for everything to lay flat and look good. That doesn't look good. I'm going to try I'm going to go at that again. So what did I do? I skipped all of that. There we go. And so at this point, okay, backing up. Go way back. Okay, on this moss stitch, I'm going to jump to the corner for the next one. Hook right in here. Do a single crochet. And then I'm going to do the two, the chain two to make it around the corner. And now I'm off again with the moss stitch into the hole. So I'm gonna keep going and take a break from videoing. Um, this continue around your your second time around the square, and then continue to do the third time if you're interested in doing exactly what I do. And I'll meet you back right uh, before we finish up that final round, round three, and back to our original corner with a marker in it. See you soon. Okay, I know I said I was going to meet you on the third round, um, but I'm still on the second round. I thought I'd go around this corner again. I felt like I was a little unclear in the last time. So heading around the corner, moving from um, a place where I did two, previously I did two stitches in a row, so two single crochets in a row. 
And so there's really not a gap in between them like you usually find in the middle of a row of moss stitch. So here's what I think is the best way to do it. Uh, I, I am gonna go into between those two and just do a single crochet without that chain one and then into the corner with a single crochet. And then I will continue with my chain two around the corner back in the hole for that single crochet on the new side, chain one, and then I continue on going on the moss stitch. So hopefully that's clear and let's meet again at the end of the third round. Welcome back. We are coming up on the end here. The stitch marker is telling us that we are back to where we started on the border. This is my third time around. I'm going to show you a couple different endings on this. The first one is one that I've used for camping, for my camping dishcloths. I have a little deal where I have hooks on it, so I appreciate a little loop. So when I um, am camping, I can clean off our tables. I'm going to show you the loop, how to do that first, and then I'm going to back out and then show you just the standard ending for the dishcloth without a loop, the type I use at home. So this is coming up on the end here. So looking at doing a loop, I'm going to, first of all, do a little ending with a slip stitch, slip stitch, and then I'm gonna make a loop of 10 chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, that's a good, a good length in my experience. So, and then I'm going to loop back around and I'm going to grab whatever you'd like to grab. Uh, maybe this same stitch right here with another slip stitch. And at this point, you could cut off your tail and go. Uh, that's a, a really simple loop. I have done um, kind of a lining of the loop to make it look even more polished. So this is how I do that. I go back to the start of the loop and I just do single, cro sti single crochet stitches all the way around the loop, kind of like how you might be doing single crochets in a magic circle or something like that. So it's just all around, you're kind of lining that loop for a finished look. Continue around with the single crochets, single crochet. How many of these? Well, I don't have a number. I say just go until it looks good. You're kind of in the driver's seat on this dishcloth. Let yourself explore and do what appeals to you and your creativity. I don't know, it looks like it, maybe I could do one more in there. There we go, and then I'm gonna go back over here and do a slip stitch around here, a little different hole, and there you go. There is a dishcloth with a loop on it. That's pretty cool. So I would then snip the the, the um, yarn here and pull this loop right on through, just pull it out until that end comes out and weave in that end. I'm not going to do that though. I have enough camping dishcloths, so I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna frog this loop. Frogging means take it out. And I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna show you how I finish without the loop. All right, so finishing without the loop, I'm going to come up on this last corner and I'm just gonna go into whatever place you would like if that looks good. It could be here, it could be here. I'm gonna go right in here, which is what I did for the loop and 
slip stitch. There you have it. So I'm going to pull that out and grab the scissors, cut that yarn, and then I just pull that loop all the way out and kind of push that knot down and tie in your ends. Get a big fat needle and weave that in. I usually try to weave it in in a way that follows the moss stitch and doesn't necessarily go through the big gaps of the moss stitch because then you can see it. So weave it in um, discreetly so that you don't see that tail. And then you're gonna do that too with the other tail. After your ends are sewn in, you have a lovely dishcloth. It looks good, it feels really good, and boy, it sure works good. I wouldn't use anything else on my kitchen counters. So it's time to make it into a cute little giftable package. These PDFs are in the comment below. I made them, these labels, copy it onto beige paper, and they're very cute. So I fold the dishcloth in half and then into thirds. Label on. A little scotch tape. And you're ready to go. What a great little gift that shows people that you care. Add it to the pile. Sweet dish claws ready to give away. Hey, hope you enjoyed it. Take good care. Be well. This is Kathy from Fireweed Crafts. Thank you.